Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Hello everyone and welcome to this new video lesson We are going to continue our unit 8 lessons And today you will be introduced to a new type of verbs Exactly those we refer to as phrasal verbs Let's get started I understand that you may have a lot of questions about this new type of verbs so my objective in this lesson will be to answer those questions that can be as follows we're gonna see what is a phrasal verb why should we study about phrasal verbs what are the main types of phrasal verbs and what are the main rules for phrasal verbs? So, to get to know what a phrasal verb means, let's first study the following paragraph. Adam, can you please tell us about some of your daily activities? Okay, sir. When I get up, I tidy up my room first and have a shower. Then, I put on my clothes, have my breakfast, and finally set off for school. When I get back from school, I take off my clothes and put on my pajamas. Later, I go over my lessons and do my homework before dinner time. I don't sleep early, I usually stay up till a late time before I go to bed. In this paragraph, Adam lists some of his daily activities. And to talk about activities or actions, we normally use verbs. So, let's have a look at the verbs used. The verbs you see in the blue color, such as have, don't sleep, verb to go, and do, are common or regular verbs you already know and use. And the verbs in the yellow color, like get up, tidy up, get back, sit off, put on and take off on others are our main concern for today. These are called phrasal verbs. Now that you have seen examples, we can define a phrasal verb as a verb that is composed of two or three words. The first word is usually a verb, just like put, get, take, go, come, give, look, and a lot of other examples. So a verb plus a particle. And by the way, a particle is a short word just like a preposition or an adverb. Examples can be on, out, for, off, up, over in, up, down, after, etc. Let us make now examples from the two listed verbs and particles. So, an example can be get up, go out, put on, take off, look for, turn down and we can make other examples like come in give in a lot of other examples phrasal verbs are used just like other verbs to express actions and activities but what you should know is that when a verb is used with a particle the meaning sometimes changes let us study this example. Look, this is your teacher. In this sentence, the verb is to look, which has the meaning of to see. However, the same verb with a particle has a totally different meaning. Help me look for my phone. Notice that the verb here is look for, 
So it's the same verb to look plus the particle for. Notice that the meaning here changes into to search for. So it's no longer to see. The meaning has changed into to search for. Of course, not all verbs change in meaning when they are used with a preposition. So we have to make the difference between two types of phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs with literal meaning and phrasal verbs with idiomatic meaning. Literal meaning is the meaning the words or the letters express exactly. For example, verbs like go out and come in have literal meaning which is clear from the words. However, idiomatic meaning is another meaning the words do not say. For example, what meaning can you get from the verb break up? If you think of the same meaning that is presented in the picture, then you are wrong. Break up has another meaning, which is to separate. If you are asked to give more examples of phrasal verbs with literal meaning, I'm quite sure you will think of examples like sit down, stand up, put down, pick up, go down and go up. These verbs are easily understood because they have a literal clear meaning. However, phrasal verbs with idiomatic meaning are sometimes confusing and difficult to learn. That's why we have to study them and learn them just like the way you learn new vocabulary items. Here is a list of examples. The first example is put on, put on clothes, it means to wear clothes. The opposite is take off, take off clothes, remove clothes or unwear clothes. One more example is turn on, turn on the TV, turn on the lights, which means start something start the lights or start the TV. The opposite is turn off, turn off, to stop the lights. One more example is turn down, to lower, turn down the value means lower the value. The opposite is to turn up, that means to make it higher, turn up the volume, means make the volume higher. An important thing you should know about phrasal verbs is that the same phrasal verb may have different meanings. For more understanding, let's study these two examples. The first example says can you help me pick up the papers? Notice that the phrase verb pick up here has a literal meaning, which is to collect or to take something from the ground, just like presented in the picture. Let's look now at a second example. We pick up new English words in class. Notice that the sentence has the same verb, pick up. But, do you think the verb pick up here means collect, just like in the first example? Of course not, because it does not make any sense to collect words in your English class. 
Pick up here means to learn. So to pick up new English words means to learn new English words. Now let us discover some rules we have to respect and pay attention to when using phrase verbs. The first thing we should know is that phrase verbs, just like other verbs, can be transitive, which means they need or take an object. Just like you see in this example, turn on the TV, put on your jacket look for the keys so we just cannot use verbs like turn on put on look for without an object phrase verbs can also be intransitive verbs that means they don't take an object an example is let's go out please come in i will sit down Notice that the verbs go out, come in, sit down are used with no objects. Another thing we have to know is that when we use a verb with a particle, a preposition or an adverb, sometimes we can separate between the two. Other times we just cannot separate between them. That's why we have to know that there are separable phrase verbs. This means the verb and the particle can be separated. Just like you see in this example. Turn on the TV. Turn on the TV. You can see that the verb turn and the particle on are brought together, but it is correct to say turn the TV on. Turn the TV on. If the object is a pronoun, it should be put in between the verb and the particle. Just like in this sentence, turn it on. Turn it on. But we never say turn on it. This is not correct. Other phrase verbs are non-separable. This means that the verb and the particle cannot be separated. An example is to look for. The verb to look and the particle for are never separated. They are usually brought together, just like in this sentence. Look for the keys. Look for the keys. And it's not correct to say look the keys for. This is totally incorrect. Again, if the object is a pronoun, the sentence becomes look for them look for them the sentence look them for is not correct again we just cannot say look them for but the correct way or the correct sentence is look for them or look for the keys The last thing you should know about phrasal verbs is that a phrasal verb can take any verb tense just like other verbs. Let's study an example and let it be the verb to go out. In this sentence, he goes out for a walk at night, the verb is goes out. This is the verb to go out in the simple present. Another example is he went out for a walk. Notice that the verb is went out, which is the simple past of the verb to go out. 
Please notice that the changes are made to the verb only and not the preposition. So please remember when conjugating a phrase verb, change the verb part only and do not change the preposition part. For example, to put the verb pass away in the simple past, we add ed to the verb, just like in he passed away. But we never say he pass away. This is not correct. Let us now practice with more phrasal verbs. In this exercise, I would like you to match the phrasal verbs in the list with the corresponding pictures. Try to stop the video now. Think of and answer the exercise. We shall correct in few moments. Let us correct now. The matching verb for picture number one is write down, write down. The answer is easy because the verb has a literal meaning. However, you might find it difficult to find the matching verb for picture two since the verb has an idiomatic meaning. The answer is take after, take after, which means to look like. You may notice that the father and his son look like each other. They resemble each other. Picture three is to be matched with the verb to grow up, which means to become older or bigger. Picture four is to be matched with the verb to look up, which means to search for a word or a piece of information in a book or in a dictionary. Picture five, and the matching verb is run away, run away. And the last picture is to be matched with the verb to look after, which means to take care or to care for someone. The second exercise is a gap filling exercise. I would like you to fill in and complete the following sentences with the right or the appropriate phrasal verb from the list. Remember that only one single phrasal verb should be used in each of the sentences. Again, try to stop the video, tell you think of and answer the exercise, and then try to compare your answers with the correct ones. Let us correct the task now. The first sentence says, Hanan, her mother, they both have blue eyes. The key information is the second part of the sentence. Hanan and her mother have blue eyes, both of them. This means they take after each other. They look like each other. So the answer is Hanan takes after her mother. Sentence two. Can you please the music? I need to concentrate on my work. So you may understand that what I want is that uh, I would like the music to be stopped or at least to be lowered. So the answer is, can you please turn the music down? Pay attention to the object here, which is the music. It is to be put between the verb and the particle. So can you please turn the music down? I need to concentrate on my work. Sentence 3. My brother lost his job. My brother lost his job. He must another one, that means another job. The matching verb should be 
he must look for another one meaning he must search for another job sentence four says when my mom is out i must stay at home and my little brother so the meaning here is i must stay at home and take care of my brother so a synonym for take care of my brother would be look after my little brother i must stay at home and look after my little brother sentence five watching english movies helps me new english words and expressions it is common that watching movies helps people learn languages so the first meaning learn here is pick up new english words meaning learn new english words and expressions sentence six don't your jacket it's called here the matching verb should be don't take off your jacket meaning don't do not remove your jacket it's called here and the last sentence when i grew up I would like to be a doctor meaning when i become older i would like to be a doctor that's everything for today thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video have a good day and stay safe